Hi there, and welcome to another short web snippet brought to you by the guys here at Nova Systems. My name is Matthew, and this time I'm going to just show you a quick tip to help you combine beam and shell meshes in a simulation study. Okay, so what we've got here is a very simple model. Uh, I've got three I-beams just basically held together by uh, one flat sheet of metal. So this is going to be a very quick and simple example. Now, what I'm going to do is set up a study, so I'm going to fix uh, the ends of each of these beams. So first of all, I'm going to come in and edit the joint group. Uh, calculate that so that we get all of the joints at the end of the beams here and hit OK. And then I'm going to apply a fixture, so I'm just going to put a fixed geometry for the time being on the joints that we've got here. So I'm going to grab all six of these joints like so and you see we get the green arrow signifying that it's being applied there and we can hit OK and that's that fixture applied. Next, I'm going to apply my external load. So I'm going to apply a pressure in this case. I'm going to apply it in this direction, acting away from the beams. So we're going to try and pull that sheet away from the beams, in essence. And I'm going to use uh, pascals in this case. And let's put about 2,000 pascals on there. OK, finally, the last thing that we do need to do is make sure that we've got our uh, contact set up. So at the moment, SolidWorks isn't sure how these two components are going to interact. So I'm going to come into the contact set. I'm going to select bonded. I'm going to make sure I use the beams for my first set box. And I'm going to quickly grab each of those three beams. And in the next box, I'm going to grab the back face of the sheet. Hitting OK, you see we now get our contact sets being applied. You can see by the green tick that we've already applied our materials. I've already done that in advance, and hopefully you should know how to do that by now. So I'm just going to uh, create my mesh. And here you'll see that we've got uh, an, a fairly fine mesh on the sheet. That's probably enough resolution to get accurate results on that sheet, if I'm honest. The beams, this is how the beams have come in by default. We will tackle that in a second. That's the, the crux of this tip. So let's hit run. And now we can see our results. So first of all, we'll have a look at our displacement. And we've got about 29 mil or so displacement there in the middle of those sections, which we would expect. So that's that's absolutely fine. But the, the key thing that I'm interested in this case is the stress that's in that sheet. What you'll notice here, first of all, is the distribution. So we've got uh, these darker blue regions here with a slightly higher stress in the middle. And we've also got peak stresses in the area of each of the beams you'll notice that we've got these large blotches along each of the joining points between the beams and the sheet. Now what's happening is, if I switch back to my mesh, at each of the node locations on the beam mesh, so uh, the first where my cursor is now, the second where my cursor is now, and so on and so forth along the beam, that is the only location where the fixture is being applied between, or sorry, the contact is being applied between the beam and the sheet. So what we need to do is try and up the mesh resolution on that beam to try and get a better resolution of the contact, the bonding between the two components. So let's have a look again at that stress. And you'll see that in this case, uh, SolidWorks is predicting a yield. And although we've got a good resolution in our sheet, uh, our resolution in our beams isn't up to scratch. And so for this particular instance, we're looking at 265-ish megapascals of stress. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is just have a look at a slightly coarser mesh so we can see the impact that this is having. So let's have a look at that one. You can see now we've got fewer blotches, but we've got very big, ugly blotches uh, that not only are inaccurate, but they even look uh, like some form of inaccuracy just as a result of that shape of the uh, stress gradient. And so here we can see that our stress has jumped up to 440 megapascals, which is clearly incorrect. So now let's go ahead and make this fine. And what I've done is I've created a mesh control. Uh, so let's edit the definition of this mesh control. And because we've included beams, we've got the option to choose the beam elements in our selected entities in the mesh control. And so what we can do is control either the element size or the number of elements used to mesh each of our beam entities. So what I've done is I've selected each of those three beams and given it a value of 100 elements along the span of the beam. So if we show this mesh, you'll see that we've got a much, much finer resolution on those beams, but the mesh on our shell has stayed the same. It's identical. So now let's have a look at the stress that we've got 
on our sheet and we'll see that the maximum value has come in now at about 185 megapascals. So we've dipped in below that yield strength and we've also got much smoother stress gradients. We've still got these low regions here with the higher stress value in the middle and we've still got the higher values around the beams which is as we would expect but you'll see that they are much much smoother. If we now continue and make this mesh a bit finer uh, so now I've, I've upped the mesh to 200 elements along the span of the uh, beams you'll see that now we've sort of reached a plateau and our stress in the sheet isn't increasing any further so this 185 or so megapascals is more of a realistic value in comparison to that 400 we were getting when we had a really coarse mesh on our beams okay so that's about all I've got time for as always if you wanted to uh, get in touch with us here at Innova Systems, you can do so by dropping by our website, which is www.innova-systems.co.uk. You can give us an email at support at innova-systems.co.uk, or you can give us a call on the number that you see on your screen now.